Hey guys, on today's video we're going to go over the basics for your MacBook Air or MacBook Pro. It's the exact same instructions for both of them. So before we get started, just want to show you some stuff that you may want to buy right away, which is this right here. This is a USB-C hub. So that's what you will need because you will notice on the side of your Mac, you only have these two ports. So you might want to buy one of these so you can hook up any external hard drives or USB drives. Besides that, in order to charge up your new Mac, again, doesn't really matter which one you guys have, just plug this in here, any side of it will work. This will go into your wall outlet, and then this part will go right here. So just plug it in there, and there you go, it's charging. Now when you first get your Mac, you don't really need to charge it right away because it should have some charge already. And to turn on your Mac, again, no matter if it's MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, just open it up and you will see that automatically it will start turning on. If it doesn't for any reason, on the top right hand side, you will see that button. So let me show you. So again, that's on the top right hand side. You just need to press down on it because that's a touch ID plus a button. And you guys can go ahead, press on it in order to access your Mac. Once your Mac turns on, we can get started with everything else. Now, if you would like to turn off your Mac, you should always go into the menu and shut it down from the Apple logo. However, if you need to force shut it down because it gets stuck at any point in time, then yes, just by pressing that button and holding it, it will shut it down. So let's start off with one of the main basics that we have to set up before we do anything. Go to your system preferences. So your system preferences, you will see it down here. It will be there by default. However, let's say you don't see it there. You can always go up here on the top right hand corner. You're going to see that your spotlight search. So that's this icon here. We're going to click on that icon and we're going to type in system preferences. So if you don't see anything that I'm looking for or I clicked on, then just go into spotlight search and search for it. So here's my system preferences. I can click on it. And from there, I'm going to see this. And I want you guys to set up something essential right now. So whether you have a mouse down here below, you guys will see a mouse or a trackpad. You can set both up to have right clicking and make it a little bit more speedy. Cause right now it's probably too slow, just like I am right now. And we're going to do other stuff as well. So this goes for both of them. Okay. So whether again, trackpad or mouse, same thing. So we're going to go into trackpad for now and under trackpad, we're going to enable the tap to click, which is very, very important. So down here, we're going to see this, just put a check mark there by clicking on it. Okay. And at this point, we no longer have to click on stuff. So you don't have to do that. You can just touch the same way you guys touch your screen on your iPhone or iPad. You kind of just touch your trackpad in order to select stuff. No more clicking, which is great. Now your tracking speed for most of you, you might think this is fast enough, but once you speed it up, you're going to see that it's way better. Now moving on to clicking. Some of you may not want to press that hard. So you may want to be light or just leave it as is. As for now, we won't have to click anymore. So it's okay. I'm going to leave it at medium at the moment, but yeah, we won't have to click anymore. You can also do silent clicking. That's also an option down here, but we're going to leave all that stuff. It's up to you guys. later on, just customize it. But this is the first thing we should do. I do want to show you other options right here that we have. They should all be enabled by the way, even this right here, I would put a check mark and just go over each one and see what each gesture does, such as this one swiping through pages. How do you guys get to notification center and all that stuff? Cause you can do a lot of stuff right here with your trackpad. So the first gesture that you should know is this one right here. And that one just opens everything up. So let's say you guys have a bunch of windows right here. So I've got this right here. Also got this in the background. We have a mess going on here and I just want to see my desktop because I have some documents there. Just place your hand on top of here and just open it up. So it's kind of like the same thing you guys would do if you guys had an iPad, for example, same gesture to bring everything back in. I just have to go like this with my hand. So I'm going to go like, so then everything will go back in. Something else you can do is this with four fingers. You just go up and you're going to see all your windows open at this point in time. I can just go back by going like this. I can go back into that view like so. I can select a window such as music. 
or I can go like that and select something else. So I'm just using four of my fingers and I'm swiping kind of up and I can swipe down in order to do that. So those are very, very important gestures. Now another gesture, let's say you guys are in Safari or even Google Chrome and you're searching for something. So I just Googled my YouTube channel here, Tech and Design, and I wanna go back. Well, I don't have to press on the back button there. I can just take two of my fingers and if I meet this page, I can just swipe and then it's gonna go back to previous. And I can even go back to the one that I was before just by swiping like that. So I can swipe right and left to see if I wanna go backwards or forwards within a page. Now let's say you guys are working away and then you want to look at all your apps and programs. Well, there's a quick way to do that. Again, gestures. All I'm gonna do is this, this gesture. I'm gonna close my hand. So I'm gonna go on top of here, close my hand, and I'm gonna see all of this. So I can swipe through, just with my two fingers, I can swipe through to see all the programs that I have on here. And I can just open up any one of these. To get out of here, I can just click in the middle, for example. It's gonna get me out of there. What's this one? With two fingers, we're just gonna swipe. And we're gonna see this, all our widgets. So right here, we see our widgets, notifications, anything else. We can just swipe back, and there we go. So again, just taking two fingers, sliding, and I'm gonna see that. One more thing I didn't show you is just swiping up and down and what that does. Well, if I swipe down using my four fingers, I'm gonna see this. I'm gonna just go back. If I swipe up, I'm gonna see all my windows. And remember, you do have right clicking. So right clicking is just with two fingers. You guys can tap and there we go. I do have my right clicking where it's gonna give me other options. I also wanna note that you don't actually have to click on here. So you have to press down in order to click. You can tap to click on stuff. Just like you would tap on your iPad to click on stuff, you can tap to click here. So I can tap in order to click. So I do not need to press down right here on my touchpad in order to activate my clicking. So I do not have to press down on it in order to actually close anything or open anything up. So again, I can just tap. Very lightly tap and that will work just fine as long as you activated your settings like I showed you. So if you have a mouse, it's gonna be similar what I just showed you. However, what I want you to do with your mouse, let's just go back to our trackpad anyways, and make sure with your mouse you guys have secondary click. Secondary click would be your right clicking. So just have that enabled and you're good to go. So that's how you enable right clicking on your mouse or right here on your trackpad. Exact same instructions. So let's just go back and then we're gonna close this up for now. And at this point, we can right click on our screen, for example, and we're gonna see these options. And here's some basic options you might want right away, such as to make a new folder. To make a new folder, we can just click a new folder and we have successfully made a new folder right here. So we can move that folder to the side. This is our desktop. So we can open up this folder we made in our desktop and drag any files into there. To delete anything from your Mac, such as this folder right here, pictures, documents, anything, all we have to do is right click on that specific thing and then just select move to trash. That's one way of doing things. Another way to delete things to select it and press on your keyboard, command delete, and that will get rid of it. Once you guys have deleted something, always go to your trash bin. So that's on my bottom right hand side. I see my trash bin and I just have to empty it out. Again, I can just right click on it and select empty. However, I can also go into it and see my trash bin and see what's in there. So I'm gonna click on it and here's my trash bin. It's very important to empty it out. So on the top right hand corner, just press empty. And I do also wanna highlight that if you click on the top right hand corner, where's the date, you're gonna see widgets and notifications. So let's just click right there. We're gonna see all this. You can scroll down and you can edit these widgets at any time. So to edit them on the bottom, you're gonna see edit widgets. You can go ahead and click right there. We're gonna see all these widgets and at this point we can select any of them and take down any of them that we'd like. So let's say you guys don't want these stories. I can click on the top right hand corner and just get rid of that. And let's say I want a bigger widget for my weather. I want to really look into my weather. So on the bottom, I'm gonna see weather down here. I'm gonna click on there. And here are my widgets for weather. So I can have a small, medium, or large. Large will show me more information about it. So what I'm gonna do is just add this on the top left-hand side. I'm gonna click on it. And that's gonna be added 
right here onto my widgets. Now to close this up, on the bottom right hand side, I'm going to see done, just click on done, and I'm done with my widgets. Widgets are really cool because you guys can get a quick glance at what's important in your life, basically. From there, we're just going to click up here to get rid of them. So it's in the top right hand corner on your date just to get rid of them. Now, let's say you're doing a conference and you don't want to get all these notifications from different apps, including phone calls or anything, even text right here on your Mac. Well, we can silence your Mac not to do that. So again, on the top right hand corner, you're going to see this beside Siri. So here's Siri and beside Siri, we see this. Just click on it and you will notice this coming up. So let me just zoom in a little bit. See this where it says do not disturb click on it and you're going to see this. So you can set this up not to disturb you for one hour this evening, always on. Maybe you don't want ever to get notifications. They can be annoying at times or it just until tomorrow. So if you have a really long thing or maybe you're not really sure how long you're going to be in that meeting or you just don't want this to disturb you until tomorrow, just click right there. We're not going to see any more notifications. Obviously, if we change our mind, we can always tap on this again to get rid of it. And right now we're gonna get notifications again. So that's something really important to know now, especially now that we have a lot of meetings online, everybody's working from home, or maybe you're even doing school. You may not want those notifications on. Now getting back to here, you guys will see Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, AirDrop. AirDrop, AirDrop's pretty cool. It works really well if you guys have iPhones, iPads, you guys can transfer stuff between your Mac and your iPhone just using this. So that's important to note. We also have up here keyboard brightness, display brightness, and sound. Plus, you can always play music. Also want to show you that screen mirroring. You can only do this if you guys have anything that's compatible with screen mirroring. But anyways, I do have a separate video talking all about that, but it's just good to note that. Something else that's really important, obviously, it's how to shut down your Mac. So on the top left hand corner, we're going to see your Apple logo. So this is my Apple logo. Click on it. Going to scroll down a little bit and you're going to see shut down. That's how you guys shut down or restart your Mac. So you do have those options here. Sleep will just put your Mac to sleep so you guys can access it later on. Maybe you're gonna use it after a few minutes. So you just wanna let it rest for now, make it sleep, and there you go. It's just gonna be on rest mode. However, if you guys wanna shut it down, you would press right here and it's gonna automatically shut down in these seconds, all right? If you guys wanna shut it down right away, just press shut down, it's gonna turn off. If you guys want to force shut it down, well, that depends which Mac you guys have. You may have to hold on to power button for a few seconds and then it's just gonna force shut down. By the way, with Mac new MacBook Airs, MacBook Pros, your Touch ID, that's an actual button. So you guys can actually press and hold that to shut it down, to force shut it down. But the normal way of shutting down is from up here and then just choosing shut down. As you're getting to know your Mac, you'll find that everything is in Finder. So all your documents, everything you guys want to find is in Finder. Finder's down here on the bottom left hand side. You guys will see Finder. As I mentioned, if you don't see it, you can always type it up in the spotlight search. However, most of you will see it down here already. So we can tap on it. And once you open it up, you might see a screen like so. On the side, you're going to see various options. So AirDrop, that works. Like I mentioned before, if you have an iPhone, iPad, or Touch, or maybe another Mac, you guys can AirDrop stuff between one another. That's just to transfer files, pictures, anything you guys want, really. Recents will take a look at your recent files. Applications, that's where all your programs are gonna be at. Desktop is just our desktop and documents and downloads. So documents, that's usually where you guys wanna organize all your documents, you just drag and drop any files into there. Downloads, that's everything you guys download from the internet. So what I'm gonna show you guys right now is applications. So let's click on applications. So right here on applications, these are the apps that are installed on my Mac. So these are all the programs that I've installed at the moment. That's not the only way you guys can find your applications, by the way. We can also find your applications. Let me close this up to close any of these windows up. It's by pressing the X up here. If you guys want to minimize, you guys can press this. So that's an option as well. So we're just going to go ahead and close this. We can also press Command Q, by the way, to quit anything. So if you want to close that or really close an app or a program on your Mac, press Command Q. That's essential, really good to know. But anyways, I wanted to show you another way you guys can access your programs. Obviously, there's quick ways of doing it, but down here below, you guys will also see Launchpad. So let's just tap on the Launchpad and here they are. That's another way to access all your programs and take a look at them. We can also search for them. So if it's a specific program, maybe you have a lot, 
just click up here and search for that program. To get out from this, just click away. Just click anywhere that's not a program and you're gonna get back here. Now to surf the web, we can use Safari, but there's also Google Chrome and other apps that we can use. So right now I'm gonna show you how to download Google Chrome, which is something that everybody uses all the time. So right now we're gonna go right into Safari. Here's Safari down here. Again, if you don't see it, we can use Spotlight Search. So that's on the top right hand corner. That's a Spotlight Search. We can click right there and we can type up Safari. Once that comes up, we can just click on it. And here's Safari, we're gonna just close this up. On the top, you're gonna see your search bar and just type in Google Chrome. Then we're just gonna hit the enter key. We're gonna see this and here is the first thing. Usually I always tell you guys don't select the first thing because that's an ad. So it could be anything. It doesn't really have to be something from Google, but hey, it's Google. So they're gonna put their thing first and not some advertisement from another company. So for safety, you should always scroll down and just select the second option. So you will see download and install Google. This is from google.com. That's exactly where you have to go. download anything from Google such as Google Chrome. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. So we're just gonna click on the first option actually. And right here, we're gonna see get more done, Google Chrome, blah, 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 blah and download Google Chrome for Mac OS X 10.11 or later, which is exactly what your Mac is. So we're gonna go ahead and download right now Chrome. So depending which Mac you guys have, you'll download the Intel chip or the Apple chip. Newer Macs, if you guys just bought a Mac, it's gonna have the Apple chip, they mean M1 chip. So if you guys have a Mac that in the description set M1, the newer Macs, then it will be an Apple chip or else it's just gonna be an Intel chip. You can also check that out up here on the top left-hand side. You're gonna see your Apple logo. Just click on it about this Mac and you guys will see if it says Intel or maybe it just says Apple. Anyways, once you guys verify which one you guys actually have, just go on and select your second option or your first option. In this case, it is an M1, so we're gonna click right here. We're gonna go, we're gonna see this message. We're gonna go into allow and it's gonna download. Now one more thing, since you know this will take some time downloading, well actually it's already done downloading, but to get everything set up correctly, we're gonna go back into system preferences. System preferences, we're gonna open that up and we're gonna make sure that everything that we download can download without any problems. To do that, we're gonna go right into our privacy. So that's down here below, security and privacy. We're gonna see this icon, click on it. And from here, if you're having any problems downloading any apps or it doesn't really matter what it is, it could be this Google Chrome or installing anything from the internet that's not directly from Apple, then we have to make these changes. So we're gonna go on to click to unlock. So it's in the bottom left-hand side. We're gonna click right there. We're gonna unlock this first. We're gonna go ahead. We can use our password or our fingerprint, depending on what you guys have. We're gonna unlock this. And from here, what we have to choose is the second option. So App Store and Identify Developers. Do not just have App Store. So make sure you guys have the second option. And if you're having any problems with any anything actually downloading and installing, you will see an additional message down here below where you guys can click on Allow. So just keep that in mind. For now, we're just gonna close this up. And since we have successfully downloaded Google Chrome, we can always go in the top right hand corner. We're gonna see this arrow and we're gonna see show downloads. Here's our DMG file. Usually programs for Mac will be .dmg. Not like Windows files that are .exe or any other one. Another way to see this is just going to your downloads. So I'm gonna teach you that too. If you guys open up Finder once again, we can always click on downloads once Finder opens up and we're gonna see our downloads right here. There are several views to look at your files. So I really don't like this first look. I like to see my icons. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this. And this is the difference. So we're gonna see an icon instead of a list, which is this option. So I do like things a, bit, a little bit more visual and that's why I do that. But it depends what you guys like. Anyways, here's my DMG file. I'm gonna click on it, double click on it to open it up. It's gonna open up my Google Chrome DMG file. And basically with any app out there, to install it, it's just dragging it to the applications folder. So here it is. We're supposed to see this. And right now what it tells us is to drag this thing. So we're gonna click on it, we're gonna hold, 
we're gonna drag it on top on top of our applications folder but yes this is our applications folder that's what we're doing right now we're transferring it over there and that's it it's that easy so we can go ahead and close this up so we're gonna tap up here and then we're gonna go back into our applications and from here we're gonna see Google Chrome it's right here so we can double click on it and we're gonna open up Google Chrome from here we should just press on open and we shouldn't have any problems again if you have any problems I showed you guys that in the system preferences where you can change a few things but anyways we're gonna start Google Chrome for now before we start Google Chrome, make sure to read this. Set Google Chrome as your default browser. You may want that, may not want that. For me, not really. Although I like Google Chrome, I don't want it to be my default browser. So anytime I click on a link, I don't want Google Chrome to open. I do like Safari. And we also have this option, which is to make Google Chrome better. Now that I do like. I do like sending off that information about anything that goes wrong to Google. So we're gonna go ahead and start Google Chrome. And here we go. Right now we got a few notifications. To close any notifications, because they might be annoying, you can just tap on the left hand side. So we're gonna see this X, tap on it, tap on it, that's it can close notifications that just came up. Going back into Google Chrome, right here we have it, and we can start up just by getting started. We can sign in with our Google, or on the top, you guys can just type up google.com for example. So to search for anything, we can just go ahead press the return key and we're gonna search for those videos or information about any website here on Google. So that's how you guys can search and use Google Chrome right here on your Mac. Now I did mention about properly closing windows and programs. At this point, uh, this is something that's not too great about Mac, but on the top left hand side, you guys will see this, right? And I did tell you that to close any windows, you would need to do that. Yes and no. So for programs such as Google Chrome, if you do that, it's not really closed. So I'm gonna tap right there, tap here, I'm gonna close everything. And you might notice on the bottom, you're gonna see Google Chrome with this dot below it, right? The same thing goes with Safari right here. I don't really have any other apps that are open. So although I closed them technically, they're not really closed, they're kind of minimized. So to actually close those apps, we do have to press Command Q or just quit them. So I'm gonna open up Google Chrome again. So here's Google Chrome, and to properly close an app, such as Google Chrome, any program, like I mentioned before, you would do Command Q to actually close it and quit it, or you can always tap up here, you're gonna see Chrome, for example, or whichever program it is, so just tap on it, and if you scroll all the way down, you're gonna see quit. So you guys can quit Google Chrome or quit any app for that matter. Or again, you guys can always press Command Q on your keyboard, so we're gonna do that. And as you may notice, if I look down again, I'm not gonna see that dot underneath it. And that's because it's no longer opened at all. It's fully closed. So that's how to fully close any applications, programs right here on your Mac. So at this point, since we're done installing Google Chrome, we can always just right click here and eject Google Chrome. That's just ejecting the installer. That's all, it's kind of like deleting it but we're not deleting the app itself. So don't worry about that, guys. Just make sure to eject it. It might take a little bit like right now. Usually they don't. It's the first time I actually took that long. But anyways, we're done with that. Now something else that's really useful to know about your Mac is that you can customize so many things and so many keys when it comes down to it. So for example, maybe you have a smaller MacBook Pro, MacBook Air, and you want more space on your screen, and you don't want to spew this the whole time because you may not need to view this the whole time, every single icon you guys have down here. Well, there's a way around that, so we're gonna go into System Preferences. Now again, if you don't see System Preferences down here, you can always look for that up here in your Spotlight Search. So what we want to look for is our third option up here, Dock and Menu Bar, just tap on it. And this is something that most people use, but you don't have to if you don't want to. Automatically hide and show the dock. So down here below, we can go ahead and hide that dock if we don't want it. So we're gonna go ahead and click right there. What does that do? Well, I'm gonna click and unclick there so you guys can see what happens. See how it disappears? That's what it does. So let's say I made it hide. What happens? Well, if I scroll all the way down, it's just gonna appear. So that's what I'm doing. As long as I'm not touching that, 
then it's just gonna disappear. However, if I go down with my mouse, all the way down, I'm gonna see everything that I want. Now something else that's pretty cool that I like to activate is up here, magnification. So I'm gonna put a check mark right there. And what this does is this. So now that I scroll down, it's gonna magnify everything. Now, in my case, I think that's a little bit too big, but some people may like that. We can adjust that, so I can adjust to the middle-ish. So now that if we go down, they just go up a little bit more. So it kind of highlights what you're scrolling over. I'm gonna go over a little bit more, and there we go. So right now it's highlighting what I'm gonna select. Now this is pretty useful, again, if you have a 13 inch, uh, it's pretty nice that this will highlight what you're scrolling over. So that's a quick tip for you to customize and further customize your Mac. So for now, we're just gonna close this up. Now I'm just gonna show you what's down here and what each one of these is. So Launchpad already showed you, just shows you all your apps. Safari is just a web browser where you can use, same thing as Google Chrome. And right here we have messages. So this is just iMessages. If you have an iPhone, for example, you can hook it up and you will see your text messages as well here. So if somebody from Android sent you a message, you will also see it here. If you don't have anything like that, if you don't have an iPhone, then you're only gonna see iMessage in there. So that means you're only gonna see messages from other people using an Apple device, since iMessage only uses your data or your Wi-Fi. Anyways, moving on to FaceTime. Well, we've all kind of seen what FaceTime is. It's just you calling over somebody else. You can do FaceTime audio, by the way, if you don't really wanna show your camera, so you can do that as well. Um, you guys can also even use Siri to make those FaceTime calls or even send text messages. So Siri is on the top right here. So you can click on it and just go on and use Siri to make any phone calls or anything like that. So you can tell Siri to do that. You can tell Siri to do a lot of things, even tell you the weather and stuff like that. Anyways, going back here, we're gonna go into mail. Mail's good to set it up. Uh, you don't really have to. You can always just go into your mail through Safari or Google Chrome. Just go into, let's say you guys have Hotmail, go into your Hotmail through Google Chrome or Safari. Doesn't really matter. But yes, you can set up your mail right here to go along with your Hotmail or Gmail or whichever. So you guys can have everything right in there. Anyways, Maps would be like Google Maps, but it isn't Google Maps. It's Maps created by Apple. And Photos, that's where you could keep all your photos and usually they end up there. Anyways, if you have an iPhone, you're going to see that a bunch of your photos are there already. Moving on to Calendar, well, it's just a standard calendar. Contacts, you can view all your contacts from there if you have any. Moving on to reminders, that's where you can open up, type up stuff just to remind you. Again, I like to use Siri for everything, so you can tell Siri to remind you of something in a specific date, and that's where it's gonna be added. Notepad, well, that's where you can write any notes that you like. So I actually use notes a lot, and I keep everything in there from videos that I need to do or any additional notes. Your Apple TV app, that I'm gonna go into later because that's just an app, it's not Apple TV Plus, and I'll show you that in just a second. Music, same deal, you can check that out later. And with podcast, again, just go right into it and see if you like anything in there. News, there's stuff that's free in there and there's also paid stuff. So you can pay for a subscription or you can look up free news in there as well. Your app store, that's where you're gonna download a lot of your apps, but not all of them. Like I just showed you before, you can always go and look for specific apps that you want, such as Google Chrome from Safari, you can download that. And you wouldn't download that from the App Store, for example. But there's a bunch of apps in there that you may want. Moving on to System Preferences, which I already showed you. And all the way here, we're gonna see your trash, which is always important to empty it out. Now, before we keep going with anything, I wanna move on to System Preferences again. And that's because I wanna show you something I do have a video showing you really specifics of how to set up an external hard drive with your Mac, but I think that's the best way to have a backup of your documents and everything you're gonna move on to your Mac. So make sure to activate Time Machine. That's down here below. And that's using an external hard drive. Don't activate it if you don't have an external hard drive. There's no point. But if you have one, use Time Machine. I have a video, whole separate video, showing you how to set up Time Machine. So make sure to watch that if you're interested in backing up your files, if they are important to you. Or else, yes, you can use Google Drive or anything else like that to keep your files online and secure. For now, we are done. Hopefully you have fun with your Mac. You will get used to it really fast, trust me. As long as you watched and followed these steps, you should be all good. 
Anyways, that would be it for this video. If you guys have any questions, comments, you guys can write down here in the comments area. Don't forget to subscribe and rate. Thank you.